Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in, let's say, Spain. Abducted malt whiskey. So um, I bought this bottle, but bottle without knowing that the packaging actually is a little bit of a gimmick here. You see the UFOs, you see the ooh, and you see abducted malt whiskey. So it says on the outside, mysteriously sherry cask aged at Bodega Sanchez Romato on Raras, Jerez de la Frontera, Spain. Distilled in Scotland, produced a produce of Spain. So, um, first of all, even, even if you look at the packaging here, wait a second, I want to show this to you. Um, um, yeah, yellow, all right? So, um, it's a little bit hip, um, hipper than I am, to be honest. Um, Oh, okay, that was this thing that was pushed out. Okay, got it. Um, what we have here is a bottle. Uh, it reminds me a tiny little bit, uh, especially from the cork here, of a old granddad. Big old thing here. Um, press cork. Pours a little bit um, like that as well. And um, what we actually have here is the Caledonian um, Herald. Interesting, isn't it? So we actually have a newspaper here. We have a ducted a malt whiskey. Not single malt, which is interesting, but malt whiskey, which actually is good. And it's of course, cannot be called scotch because scotch has to be distilled, aged, and also bottled in Scotland. That's the requirement. All right, so we have whiskey base number 152, um, 611, 40%. Now, what we do know is if we take a look at the whiskey base and also with, with their website, that we have 715 bottles. Why 715? Because that's exactly the amount of bottles you can get here from a 500 liter butt. Hmm, why do we have a 500 liter butt? Because we have sherry. So let me now describe, explain something. I will try, hopefully I put the, um, the graphic up here real quick. So um, we take Scottish new make spirit and we bring it over to Spain and we put it in the Crida Reras, which means the upper part. And then we have down below the bottom on the ground, which is called Solera. Solera, we know. Um, Glenn Livet uses the uh, Glenn Fittich uses the Solera process and others to make sherry. So what we had is a total of 12 casks. We had three casks, each with 500 liters, um, filled with um, Monte Tiado. We had three casks, each 500 liters, filled with Ordoloso. And we had three casks also filled with Pedro Jimenez. And what we do is actually then we have down below in the Solera, we have another one cask, one cask, one cask, each of the Amontegado, Oroloso, on Pedro Jimenez. And you take a third, a third from each of these casks, and then you take from the above casks and fill up the bottom casks. So this is a third of whiskey that was matured in the Pedro Jimenez cask. This is a third of a whiskey that was matured in Oroloso. And this is a third of a whiskey which was matured in the Amontegado. So if they filled up the first cask, um, the Solera casks, they had a total of 12. 12 times 500 is 6,000 liters, which is a lot of whiskey, to be honest. So 6,000 liters would be um, then 700, um, 700 times uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 12. Um, 700 times 12 is a lot of bottles, so they could be doing this for the next 10 years or so. I have to consider the angel share. So this is actually 715 bottles per year. Mm. So what they do is, um, this is a seven-year-old, so they'll probably be the eight-year-old, the nine-year-old, blah, 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 blah. So this is basically a sherry producer, the Sanchez Romato. And they said, hey, we're making other spirits as well, not just sherry. Why not make a malt whiskey? Well, we can't distill it ourselves, but we can buy it and we can mature it in our wonderful casks here on our bodega, at the bodega, down in the, in the, in the basement, and have a very, very good whiskey. And ta-da, that's what we have here. All right, very, very nice. So if I smell this, I get exactly what I remember here. Um, I bought a bottle of Pedro Jimenez. I think it was 10, 12 years old. I bought a bottle of Amatiriado. I bought a bottle of Oroloso. I like the Oroloso. I drank that. I did not like the Pedro Jimenez. It was just too thick, too rich. And I wasn't a big fan of the Amotelliado. It was a little nutty. 
And so I mixed the two, and then it was more than acceptable. So I'd have a nice little nightcap, and I'd drink a little bit of my sherry in the evening, and after about a month, the bottles were empty. Yay. But exactly that smell and that taste of the Pedro Jimenez together with the Amateriado is something I may not ever forget, and it's exactly what I'm getting here. This is uh, very much the nutty, the um, fig, um, the... It's like a dark... Um, Imagine you had here our, our creme brulee, and you took the, 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 the torch and, and that, that, the sugar on top, the brown sugar, actually caramelized and almost got a little burnt. And that's what we're getting here. We're getting some figs, we're getting some plums, we're getting some... Something else. I'm getting some... Um, Fermented grape juice. Yes. Red grape juice. Think red red jelly, but fermented. It's a little... I'm going to say too strong on the nose. But wait. Let's try it. Hmm. 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 On the palate, I'm going to say something really dumb, but it's exactly true. It's like the eye of the storm. Um, I, I, I teach at the university, and at the university we have panels on the back wall, and there's actually tiny um, slits in there to actually absorb all the, the sound waves. So when I walk by, I, um, before you have a little bit of noise, and then you walk by and it's <laughs> silence. It's like the eye of the storm. And that's what I'm getting here. This is actually a very balanced whiskey. I was not expecting that at all. I've had some crappy whiskey in my life. Um, I bought this at the whiskey.de by Horst. Horst. Um, it was online for like one or two days. I saw it. I was like, oh, that looks just like Nomad. I've done Nomad. Um, Richard Patterson had that same thing. He took spirit from um, Scotland, brought it to the Triangle of Jerez. Um, let it there matured, and it was actually a very good whiskey for a very good price. I'm going to say it's actually half the price of this. I think you can get a good Nomad over here in Europe for about 30, 28 euros, and this is 54 euros, so it's mm, almost double the price. And so I said, oh, let's go. Why not, why not try it? I went back a few days later. It's absolutely sold out. Um, so, as I said, the nose is a little bit too dominant, but the palate is absolutely fantastically balanced. That third, that third, that third ratio is somehow exactly right. Hmm. And by the way, um, this coats the glass. Um, it's not little legs that run down. There's like a like a thick. Um, coating on the glass of the sherry, which is very, very nice. Wow, as a Sanchez Romanto, you did a great job. Um, I'm more than um, pleased at this. Now, as a, I'm going to call it a whiskey geek, um, I'm not impressed by the um, packaging. Now, the packaging is probably maybe one of your uh, great ideas to reach the younger generation. Go for it. You have a good story. I like the nice little um, newspaper here. We have the Caledonia, as I showed, the, uh, the, the Herald and the abduction malt whiskey, and you have a nice story. And it's ripped off, and it's declassified. It's really the secret here and so on. Um, the whole backstory is well done. My personal opinion, too well done. But that's okay. It almost distracts from the beautiful, beautiful spirit that you created. I'm going to give this a solid B, which is amazing for me. Normally, I would not give a B, but this is a B. And for value for money, I'm going to give it a C. Could have been a C minus, but C. Well done. Well done, ladies and gentlemen over there in um, Jerez de la Foratera. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, I have batch L19198. If anyone knows what that means, please contact me. My question of the day is a tr tr tricky question. I talked about Nomad, which was also Scottish whiskey that was um, brought to, or abducted and taken then to Scotland. 
we talked about here, this whiskey that was also taken to Scotland. Do you know of any other whiskeys that have been um, abducted and taken to foreign countries and then filled up there? Ah, you remember it. Japan! Japan is a silly country, at least with the whiskey laws, that allows anything to be called Japanese whiskey that is bottled in Japan, not that is produced in Japan, which I think is absolutely silly. So you can take Canadian whiskey, bring it over then. Well, Whistle Pig does the same thing, but shh. Um, you can take Canadian whiskey, bring it over to Japan, and then call it, ooh, look, it's whiskey. It's Japanese whiskey. Put a little Japanese symbol on there. Do I have a Japanese symbol here? Oh, yeah, I have a little bit of Japanese here. Looky there, that's Nika. That's probably made in Japan, by the way, bad example. I have some others back over here, but I'm not going to be able to get them that quickly. Um, and then, of course, it's then called Japanese whiskey. If it's from Scotland, it's from America, it's from maybe any place else in the world, and just fill it up there. <clears throat> Angers me every single time I think about it. Any other things, any other places you know of that do something similar? Please write it down in the comments. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Europe, trying um, whiskey and reviewing whiskey you probably will never, ever see. Sorry. That's my slogan, and I'll see you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.